Today we are going to be putting together the program for our seven second game. So to start this process, please go to the Microbit website. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. And I would like you to call this seven second game. Remember the purpose of this game is to push button A It'll count down, and then what we want to do is we want to try to make sure that seven seconds after we start, we push button B to see how close we can get to exactly timing seven seconds. Fun game that you can play at any time. Now, we're not going to need an on start or a forever. Uh, we are going to need a button A pushed, and we are also going to need a button B pushed and we'll change this to button B. So let's start with what we have to have happen in button A. If button A is pressed, we're going to run a countdown sequence including graphics and one second pauses. Um, so what I want to do is uh, I want to uh, do my countdown sequence graphically. So I'm going to go in uh, to my basic drawer and I'm going to create um, three of these and I can do that by copying and pasting and I'm actually going to put another one in as a blank at the bottom that will be the actual start I'm also in between each one going to put a pause a pause of 1000 milliseconds which is going to be a one second pause so each of these will be held 1000 and I'm going to do this after this one and after this one and then I'm going to create I'll sort of make it look like it's coming into the middle so that'll be the first one this will be the second one this will be the third one then we have a blank so just to see what it will look like three two one and then the blank and then it starts one and then we are going to um, set start time to run time now um, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a variable and the variable is going to be called start time and we are going to set start time to zero right here after that pause. So when the screen goes blank, it actually begins. And we don't want to set it to just zero. We want to start um, what we call running time in milliseconds. Now that is going to be found under input. And I believe there is a more button. And here we go, running time. And make sure you select the running time in MS, which stands for milliseconds. So the start time is going to be set to the running time. So when we get to this line of code, it begins an internal clock on the micro bit. Now, believe it or not, that's all we have to have button A really do. Our start time is going to be set to the running time in milliseconds, and that we have that code for. Now, if button B is pushed, we have a lot of different things that are going to happen. So let's do button B. If button B is pressed, the first thing we need to do is set the elapsed time. Now, this is a relatively complicated uh, equation here. So elapsed time is the amount of time from when it starts to when you push button B. So we're going to do elapsed time. And under elapsed time, we are now going to set elapsed time to and then we have a little math equation that we're going to do. We need to go into math 
and we need to select subtraction. Now in the first part of this subtraction, we're going to put the running time in milliseconds. So the running time in milliseconds we got up here in input. Running time milliseconds minus the start time, which is in variables. And when you click on this section, click in the middle, sort of between the running time and the minus to bring it up and put that red dot right at the zero. That way uh, you don't lose your, uh, you don't lose any components there. This can get a little tricky in dealing with this. Next, we're going to set the score. Now, um, we want to check to make sure that the score is however long we have created. We're going to subtract that from 7,000 because that's what our target time is. So we are going to set score. So we need a new variable, and this is going to be called score. We are going to set score to, and now we need another subtraction, so that's going to be in math. And we'll drag that over. Once again, we'll do this down here. The elapsed time minus 7,000. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I did this slightly incorrectly here. Under math, we're looking for the absolute value. The absolute value of zero minus zero. So this is going to be 7,000 over here. And this zero is going to become the elapsed time. So we're going to put the elapsed time right there. Now this has happened previously. So here we go. This is what it should look like. The absolute value and score is going to be set to the absolute value of the elapsed time minus 7,000. Now, what happens if the score is zero? Under logic, if and we're going to change this to score equals zero. So under logic, if the variable score equals zero, then we're going to show string the winner, because that's what we want to have happen. Winner will be displayed on the LEDs, and we're going to play some winning tones. So let's see. I'm going to go into music, and I'm going to play That'll be sort of our, our uh, ringtone tone there. So we start out with a C. We're going to play another tone. So I'm just copying and pasting these in. D. And I'll paste this one in. This is going to be a D sharp. Oops. Don't need that yet. Copy and paste. E. And then an F. And then an E again. You notice I just did that to kind of make it easier because this, uh, these last, this one and this one were the same, so I just duplicated them. And there's, to make it go a little quicker, I'm changing these each to a half a beat. So 
so it runs through it a little faster. This is a half. This is a half. Then half of a half would be a quarter, so it skips that beat a little bit quicker. And then it plays this last beat as a half. Now, so if you win, if the score is zero, it's going to play all this. Now, let's just check. See what happens if we push B. Nothing because everything is set to zero, so. Which is okay. We can check that later when we actually play through the game. Okay, next, we have to decide what's going to happen if we are off, if we don't have it 100% correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an else, which is down here. And under else, we're going to show the string. off by I'm going to leave a space so the number doesn't jam right up against it and then I'm going to show the number now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the number I don't want to show zero what I want to show is I want to show the absolute value so I'm going to take this little section, I'm going to copy and paste it, because this fits in here nice. The absolute value of the score divided by 1,000. And then I'm going to show string, create that down here. I'm going to put a space and then SEC for second. Okay, that is my entire program. Now let's try it and see what happens. I push A, it's going to count down. Three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I was off by see how much 1.03 seconds uh, not too bad but I can do better so let's try it again three two one one two three four five six seven uh, I didn't get it yet but I'm off by Ooh, 1.4. I got worse. Let's try it again. 1, 2, 3, go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This time I was off by... Ooh, 0. Point one. Oh my gosh, I was so close. One tenth of a second off. I almost won. So that's the game. Um, when you are finished, please make sure that you hit share and that you send the seven second game to me. Um, go to publish the project. And what you'll do is you'll copy the link and make sure you insert that into the create ad for the Google Classroom. Any questions, email me. Have fun with your seven second game.